Here's another example uh, for face blend. And a lot of people have been asking really specific things about face blend. You know, there's a lot of options in there. So I thought I'd just do a few real simple snippets, uh, not try and bite off everything in one hit. Uh, today's snippet is going to be about constraints and limits inside the face blend. Okay, so I've lined up three identical pieces of geometry here because what I'm going to do is show the difference between just a simple, uh, you know, unconstrained face blend. One's called a tangent hole line and one is a cliff edge. Uh, okay, so to get started, let's just do the simple one here. So again, we go to the face blend. And for my first side, I'll choose these three faces, uh, reference faces. Uh, I'll come back to this one because there is a trick to, to getting this done as well. Uh, but anyway, second side is going to be this big uh, revolved surface. So straight away it puts in the face blend and I've got a radius of 10, I've got, it's got it as a circular and everything else is absolutely as defaults, right? Uh, rolling ball, uh, tension propagation. And what you'll see is that in order to keep this radius of 10 um, with a rolling ball, it has to pull this top surface out. Um, if I just do this, you'll see that a little bit clearer. So this top surface, which was straight along, has to be pulled out in order to keep that radius 10. That is what you're going to get with no additional constraints on it. Um, but that may or may not have been what you intended or uh, your design intent. Of course, maybe you wanted this as a straight edge. So what are you going to do? Um, that is where you're going to call in one of these constraints and limits. So with the face blend, again, we'll choose these three faces as before. Uh, I could have edited that first feature uh, like this, but I, I want to show them side by side. So we open up and for convenience sake, it's best to, to, if, to close things down if you're not uh, using them, right? So I'm going to open up the constraints and limits group and you'll see a whole bunch of options. And the first one is called a tangent hold line. Now a tangent hold line, it will give you the chance to choose a bunch of tangent or edges that you want the attachment of the fillet of the, of the blend face uh, to be tangent to like the original face. So what that's going to do, if I choose these three original edges, you'll see how the fillet or the, and then the, the blending that we've done here is tangent along that edge. So this, this, this face here of the blend is coming up and it's being tangent to that, uh, to that face. Now where the, where, where the, the face is here, uh, that's because the blend radius isn't quite big enough to reach the top. So the tangent hold line is, is really a limit, right? It's not, and that's why it's called a limit here. Uh, it's not going to pull this thing up. It's just saying, well, it's going to be 10 here. And then, um, it can't, you know, you can't go any further past this, so that is the, uh, that's the limit there. So it's the tangent hold line. Right. And you see that that didn't have any effect on the front here because the edge created by the blend didn't reach that top line anyway. Uh, it only affected these sides. So now we've got from the top view, uh, we do have these straight edges compared to the first one, which we've got these, this, these edges that splayed out because it needed to, uh, to create this radius here. Uh, what we have a look at though, if we look closely at the back, you have some pretty nasty geometry uh, when you're trying to make this thing because the radius is actually pinching down to being quite small. So what we've done is we've turned this into a variable radius. Uh, it starts out at 10 here, but in order to stay tangent, Right, remember we've constrained this, this is a constraint on, on the geometry now. In order for this face to be tangent to the underlying face that created it in the first place, this radius has to get smaller and smaller and smaller. All right. And that might not be an easy thing to manufacture and it is uh, not what we really want. So there's a third option. And the third option is going to be called the cliff edge. So again, one more time, we'll just choose these three faces. And for the side two, we use that. And so that's the default again. In this case, we're going to use a cliff edge. Now the cliff edge does not require tangency. 
and I'll choose those three edges at the top. The, the front one here is irrelevant because it doesn't reach there, but I'll, I'll vary the radius in a minute and you can see how. So the cliff edge, again, is a constraint. So it's going to hold the radius, hold the, uh, the blend at that line, but it's not going to enforce tangency. So you can see as it goes down here, the radius remains at 10. It's not, it's not tangent here at all. You can see how this, uh, this arc here that comes off is just meeting this line. So that's what a cliff edge is. It creates an edge, a cliff at which the, the, uh, the blend cannot pass. Um, we finish that off. And one other way to look at this is with the curvature display. If I show the color map of this, and look at minimum radius, and I put make a minimum radius of, oh, let's use minimum radius of 10. You see in the first case, we chose just a straight blend as a, a 10 radius all the way around. Okay. I've just changed the color scale so that it's, it's, it's uh, easier to see the 10 or less. In the case of the tangent hold line, as I said, it started out at 10, but it had to decrease the radius as it went back. And the radius is actually quite small at the end here, it's 0.1. So that's not something that you're going to want to get a cutting tool into for sure. In the third case of the cliff edge, it did again remain at 10. And we've got the best of both worlds because we've, we've remained, the radius remains at 10 all the way around, and this edge is uh, kept. My, my design intent of having a straight edge is kept there. So here you go. That's three. That's not everything uh, that these uh, face blend can do, but it's a pretty important difference and one that you'll probably find very useful uh, when you are trying to keep things that are part of your design intent and not go outside of you know good manufacturing um, parameters there.